Today I'm gonna respond to a question from Lorraine who asked whether this blood glucose graph is better than this one. And I'm gonna share some tips how to get a perfect graph. And I'm gonna talk about something that I think might be the biggest lie and a false indicator when it comes to perfect blood sugar control. Let's go. Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tom. I've been a type 1 diabetic for over 30 years and I want to thank you so much because we just reached 30,000 subscribers. I decided that as a thank you, I would share some bonus content today that normally is only available to those of you who support me by paying a small monthly subscription. And today I'm giving this video to all of you for free. So you can take a sneak peek and you can see what you can expect when you join the membership program. There are more gifts for you coming up in this video. So definitely watch all the way to the end because you don't want to miss out on this. 30,000, I still can't believe it. One of the perks that my patrons get is that they can reach out to me directly through a private messaging channel and I respond to all of their questions. And to one of my patrons, Lauren, had a question so interesting and so important that I decided I just have to make a dedicated video on this topic and share this video with all of you. And the question goes like this. When it comes to blood sugar control, is it okay to have peaks and valleys like this? Or is it better to have smooth line like this? By the way, which graphs do you like better? Comment below. And Lauren also wanted to know how I use the data that I get from my CGM and what I focus on. She's focusing mainly on time in range and she wonders if there are any other patterns that she should look for and focus on. And I'm not a doctor and this is not medical advice, so please don't blindly follow what I say. I developed a framework for myself how to think about peaks and valleys. And I actually think that small spikes and drops are perfectly normal. Even a perfectly healthy person will have the blood sugar spike after eating a carby meal like this and then their blood sugar will go back down. And here is an example of what I consider a good day that I recently had. There are some peaks and valleys, but really smooth. And I think this graph is pretty close to a graph of a person who actually doesn't have diabetes. And here is an example of a bad day I had. We type 1 and type 2 diabetics can have peaks and valleys much more dramatic than a healthy person has and I get them from time to time and I really don't like to see those. So what are the different indicators you can look at to see how you are actually doing in the longer term? Let's break it out. When I go see my endocrinologist, every three months he's looking at HbA1c. For him, this is the most important number and he wants to see it below 7%. Now my latest HbA1c was 6.2 which for me is pretty good, it's okay. And I'm sure some of you have even lower HbA1c result. But to be honest, you can get HbA1c of six with a graph like this, but you can also get it with a graph like this because HbA1c is just a laboratory result. It is a snapshot of what your average blood sugar have been in the past three months. It doesn't say anything about how much the blood sugar fluctuated. But what is the most dangerous thing for us type 1 and type 2 diabetics is exactly these episodes of hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia because these can do the most damage to our bodies. I personally think that the less dramatic our spikes and drops are, the better our blood sugar is controlled. And that's why I think that a good HbA1c result can be a false indicator of a good blood sugar control. I'm not saying it always is, but it can be. When we have a lot of high peaks and deep valleys, HbA1c is actually lying to us. It's telling us that everything is okay, everything is good, but it's actually not. To be honest, I couldn't care less about my HbA1c and I focus much more on time in range, just like Lauren. So Lauren, I think you're doing it right. Experts are saying that the ideal range for people with diabetes is anywhere between 3.9 and 10 millimoles. And time in range is simply an indicator of how much of the time you spend in this ideal range with your blood sugars. My goal is to be in a range 90% of the time, but you can see that in the last 90 days, I achieved only 88%, so I missed my goal. Not a great result, but I'll take it. For me, time in range is the most important indicator of how well my blood sugar is managed in the long term. It doesn't just give me a snapshot 
of one point in time and snapshot of the average for the past three months, like the HbA1c does. Time in range never lies to me. Now, I'm definitely not saying that everyone watching this video should aim for 90% in range. We are all different and everyone is at a different stage of their diabetes management and their life. For people who were just diagnosed or who decide to have their ideal range tighter, it's definitely going to be too challenging to stay in range for a 90% of the time. And so 90% as a goal might not make sense. It might demotivate them. They might want to go for a lower percentage as a goal. My personal goal just a year ago was only 80%. But after I transitioned to a semi-automated insulin delivery system that made everything more automated and easier for me, I knew I had to stretch my goal. And that's why I lifted the goal from 80% to 90% to make it challenging, but something that I can actually achieve. Now, there is one more indicator that you can look into, Lorraine, if you want to get really nerdy like me. It's called standard deviation or SD, and you could find your SD in your Dexcom Clarity app or Freestyle Libre View. I think it should be available in both of these. The SD measures the spread of your readings from the average blood sugar. So if your blood sugar is bouncing a lot, your SD will be higher compared to situations where your blood sugar is mostly stable. And for SD, experts recommend that your SD should not be higher than one third of your average blood glucose. My average glucose in the last 90 days was 7.3 and my SD goal over long term is two, which is a little bit more stretched than one third of my average blood sugar, but it works for me and this is something that keeps me challenged and that when I achieve two, I know I'm doing a pretty decent job. And you cannot get an SD of two if your blood sugars are bouncing like crazy. So that's why I think that SD in combination with time in range is probably the best tool uh, how to look on your long-term blood sugar management. SD, time in range, this is where it's at. At least by me, by my standards. Now let's look at a practical example of how I look at my CGM data. I try to look at these graphs at least once a month or any time when I have a feeling that my blood sugars are getting out of control. And it has definitely been the case in the last week. I knew I had a lot of highs, a lot of lows, and that's why I looked at my graphs. And here is what I've seen. When looking at the last week's trends, I actually realized that I've been spiking in the afternoon and I've been having really high glucose variability in the afternoon. So you see the glucose is less stable in the afternoons compared to the rest of the day. And this is a signal for me that I need to look at the afternoons more closely day by day and see what the heck the blood sugars have been doing in the afternoon hours. And one thing that I found out was because it's very hot, I've been actually eating quite a bit of ice cream. Almost every day we had ice cream in the afternoon and every time I ate the ice cream, my blood sugar spiked. And the reason why it spiked was simple. First, I didn't carb count. I just estimated how many carbs could be in that ice cream. And second, I didn't take the insulin in advance. I didn't pre-bolus. These two things in combination, underestimating the amount of carbs and not taking the insulin early enough, resulted in a spike. And so when I saw my blood sugars higher, I had to correct. And I've been quite upset by this ice cream example because I found myself reacting to an existing problem. I always want to be proactive and prevent problems rather than reacting to them. And in this ice cream example, being proactive would mean not eat the ice cream or count the carbs in the portion of ice cream that I eat and apply insulin in advance uh, to cover those carbs and if I did that, my blood sugar wouldn't spike that much. And sometimes this really is easier said than done because being proactive really requires a lot of discipline. Guys, I want to get to the second gift I have for you right now. But before I do that, I just want to remind you that I have another five videos, bonus videos, just like this one. If you want to check them out, you just need to click the join button below this video and become a channel member and you can do it for as little as three bucks a month. In the bonus videos and members only live streams, I always go a little bit deeper on the personal level. And if you decide to join the higher tier, which costs seven bucks a month, 
then you get direct access to me and you can ask me any questions to which I always respond. We already built a nice little community over on Patreon where a few of you signed up but because some of you reached out to me and asked why don't I make the bonus content available on YouTube for a lower price, maybe more people would join, I decided to do that and I'm making this happen starting today. So starting today, you can join here within the YouTube platform by clicking on the join button. That's not all because as another thank you gift for the 30,000 subscribers, I decided to give three of you a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one video session with me where we can chat about anything you want and where you can ask me any questions you want. And of course, this is completely for free as a gift to three of you. And I'm so excited, I really can't wait to connecting with you during these sessions. So if you are interested, if you want to win one of these sessions, then definitely like this video and comment below what would you want to chat during this session about. And I will pick three most interesting responses and those three of you will win this prize. And I will announce the winners at the beginning of July. Thank you so much for watching and supporting me and I will see you next time. Ciao!